really. Well, I guess that would have been too easy. Stop. Wait. I just thought of something. Many buildings around here were destroyed during World War II air raids. Yes? All stones from the derelict buildings that were still halfway usable were used for rebuilding, including those from this church. Rebuilding what? Well, first, there is a little bridge not far from here. Then, the old metro station. And the jail, I think. Great. In that case... Oh, yes. And the zoo. That's a lot of buildings. Any idea where I should look first? They were all built pretty much at the same time. But at least you needn't try the zoo right now, because it is still closed. Okay, I'll save it for later then. Can you tell me how to get to these places? I've got this tourist info map that I can give you. Wait, let me mark the relevant sites for you. I'll go hunting for the missing blue stones then. I think I'll start with the bridge. It's supposed to be close to here. What an interesting phenomenon. A local rain shower that stops right in the middle of the bridge. The idle street cleaner may be slightly less impressive, but at least he's in harmony with the overall picture. Unfortunately, there's not a stone in sight that could fit into the mosaic. Maybe it's on the other, dirty side of the bridge. A heap of dirt, garbage, and rotting leaves. The street cleaner may not move terribly fast, but he sure does a thorough job. I gave up complaining about having to rummage through garbage a long time ago. Money. Mine for the picking. It's hardly a fortune, but with the right investment strategy, who knows? A pacifier. I don't know why, but I'm suddenly starting to wonder, do street cleaners count as civil servants? Hello? Hi. You're a street cleaner, right? No. I am a molecular biologist collecting samples for scientific research. Oh, I really thought you were... What kind of research? Of course I am a street cleaner. Oh, a comedian. I never knew street cleaners were so witty. Not that I've met all that many. The only time I've ever seen the streets swept completely clean was during a World Cup final. Touché. Surely while sweeping you would have noticed if a blue stone had been built into this bridge, right? Yes, indeed. If I had actually cleaned this bridge before. Haven't you? No. I'm just helping out. And there is no blue stone on this side of the bridge. I'm sure I would have noticed it after sweeping here for four hours. Yes, you certainly would. Why are you still sweeping this side of the bridge? It's spotless, but the other side is completely filthy. Have you looked over to the other side? Yes. Why? It is raining. Such things are known to happen. Indeed. So, I am waiting for it to stop. You mean you're not sweeping the other side of the bridge because it's raining? No. That would be silly. I thought so. I am not sweeping there because I would get wet. Oh, and you think that's less silly. Would you jump into a cesspit? No, but... You see, so why should I volunteer to get soaked? Especially when there are alternatives. Which are? I can continue to sweep here. But it, it's clean here. But not surgically clean. What will you do if it starts to rain on this side, too? Then I will be out of luck and get wet. And then what? Then I will sweep the other side of the bridge. After all, I will already be wet in that case. And they tell me female logic is hard to understand. Why are you so scared of water? I'm not. I'm just not keen on getting wet. Not as long as I can avoid it. So it's not some childhood trauma? Not that I know of. It's a professional hazard. Getting wet? Rain. You know, swing your broom, clouds will loom. To think that I keep getting accused of having a penchant for puns and bad poetry. Unless I intend to go for the wet look, I should make sure I'm not standing close to this puddle when there's a car coming. Mm. 
A very good morning to you. Buongiorno, signorina. Allow me to introduce myself. Alessandro Rossi. Nina Kalinkov, pleased to meet you. What is a good-looking Italian doing at an intersection in Paris? I am waiting for the bus. Oh, don't you have a car? Yes, of course. It is over there. Oh, the red sports car? Yes. Are you impressed? Well, yes, a little. So why are you waiting for the bus? I am supposed to meet some friends here in their van. They don't know their way around Paris, so we want to go on together from here. The signs here are rather misleading, so most people take a wrong turn at this point. Why don't you come with us? There is always a room in my sports car. Oh, yes. Why not? Oh, no, wait. I'm afraid I can't. There are some important things I must see to. Too bad. But I will be here for a few more minutes in case you change your mind. Just let me know. You would miss out on a lot. This question may sound somewhat strange, but I don't suppose you've noticed a blue stone that was used for rebuilding any of the buildings around here? You are right. That question does sound strange. However, even if there were a blue stone around here somewhere, I probably wouldn't have noticed. I was afraid of that. I've got to go. Too bad. The car is secured by an alarm. I'm sure it will go off at the slightest touch. And since I'm the only one around here, I might actually get suspected. A racy Italian sports car. It's got a pretty horse on its hood. And a not-so-pretty scratch. Hello. Are you still waiting for your friends and their van? Yes, but they should be here any minute now. I actually need the little boy's room, but I cannot leave here. Or they might take the wrong turn and get completely lost. Are you sure you want to come with us? Thanks, but I really can't. Uh, that's too bad. There's an ugly scratch on your car. Mamma mia! Why did you have to remind me? I know. It is not easy to miss, after all. Sorry. I, I didn't realize. I have been thinking of nothing else all morning. I wanted to impress my friends, so I rented this sports car. You mean it doesn't belong to you? No. But the scratch is all mine. I had only just picked up the car when disaster struck. Take it easy. It's not that bad. After all, it's just a scratch. Amazing how fast a proud and attractive man can melt into a puddle of misery. This question may sound somewhat strange, but... You are right. I was afraid of that. I've got to go. Too bad. This clockwork belongs to the clock that hangs on the outside wall of the metro station. I will try to get this clock up and running again. Hmm, the mechanism appears to be out of order. I bet it will stop again in a moment. Not a bad idea. I place the candle on the minute hand and wind up the clock. As the hand moves, the candle will slide off at some point, hit the car, and trigger the alarm. I only need to make sure that I have an alibi for when it happens. Hello. Are you still waiting for your friends and their van? Yes, but they should be here any minute. Are you sure? Thank... Uh, that's... I've got to go. Too bad.
this clock... Oh, a devilish plan which may cost me a lot of sympathy. If this were a computer game, it would probably be banned for being too violent. Unfortunately, though, this is not a game, but bitter reality. I'm on a mission to save the world, and a different set of laws applies for world saviors. So, here I go. Hello, are you still waiting? Yes. I, I hope my friends do not get lost. What? But that is... My car! Stop! Wait! You're going the wrong way! You need to turn here! Stop! Ah, no! I'm completely soaked now! That's what they call a chain reaction. It is a disaster. Like my entire life, a total disaster. Is it really so terrible that you missed your friends? Don't you think they'll find the right way anyway? Yes, maybe. But it is a matter of principle. I can't do anything right. Everything keeps going wrong. Cheer up. There will be better days. I have been waiting in vain for years. Please excuse me. I need a few minutes to myself. Oh my, he's really down in the dumps. I should follow him and make sure he does nothing rash. After all, I'm responsible for his mood, to some degree. Phew! I had been worried he might do something foolish. Hello, everything okay? I'm really worried about you. Oh, hello. Yes, it's really not my day today. First, I scratch up my car, and then I miss my appointment. They're probably halfway to Spain by now. Oh. Oh, I'm afraid that I may be responsible for the missed appointment. Is there anything I can do for you? Anything that might cheer you up? That is very kind of you. But I've been chasing Lady Luck for years now. She is simply too fast for me. You cannot change fate. And that is that. The poor guy is totally dejected. Nina, you need to think of something quick, or you'll end up only being offered roles as a movie villain. If I go away now and promise to come back soon, will you promise not to do anything stupid while I'm gone? Sure, I wouldn't even have the energy. My French is a little rusty, but as far as I can tell... Oh, oh, there's a report here about the sinking of the Calypso, the ship I was almost drowned on. Apparently they were able to rescue nearly all the passengers. Underneath is a huge advertisement by that televangelist Pat Shelton and his Puritas Cordis sect. The hasty gathering of worldly leaders in New York proves only one thing, that neither the self-proclaimed heads of state nor the so-called scientists can offer any explanation for the greatest of all disasters which is now almost upon us. And how could they, for only a steadfast belief in the might of the Lord can guide us now? He alone can be the beacon to lead us forth from the valley of the shadow of death. Hundreds of years ago, the prophet Zendona foresaw the cataclysm that is looming now. This is what he predicted. The old order of the world shall be shattered, all worldly possessions shall crumble, and from the ashes of our decadence shall rise the new kingdom of God, radiant and pure. And therefore, my call goes out to all people to ring in their ears like one final peal of thunder and open their eyes. Seek salvation in the arms of Puritus Cordis. Come now, before it is too late. I can't say I like that Pat Shelton and his Puritas Cordis crowd. In fact, I think they're a bunch of morons. The trouble is, I can't shake the feeling that there's method in their madness and that they have a definite plan. A plan to make Zandona's apocalyptic prophecies a reality. Which means they're still a bunch of morons, of course.